Welcome to your Pathway to Peace Bible class. My name is Carrie Rogers. And yes, friends, she's right next to me, my beautiful, lovely wife. Helene Rogers. And yes, friends, we are excited. You're excited? Mm -hmm. Are you delighted? Absolutely. I'm delighted. I'm excited to be on the air with you today to share this powerful, life-changing word with you. So friends, go ahead and get the Bible. Pick it up. Just study it with us today for about oh, 28 minutes. Study it. If you haven't studied with us before, try it. You will love it. I guarantee you're going to receive a rich, rich blessing. Rich blessing. Absolutely. You ready to get in the Word of God? Today's title of today's study is called, What Do the Dead Know? What do the dead know? Do they know anything? You know, friends, one of the most confusing subjects in our world today is about death. Now, what is death or what happens to a person when he or she dies? Now, I'll be honest with you. I know this subject is not what you really want to talk about. A lot of people don't like talking about death. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, they feel they, they are fearful of death. But the truth is, friends, we need to understand the truth about death. What is the truth about death? Is it something we really need to fear? There are some people who believe that when a person dies, they go either to heaven or go straight to hell. Some believe that some of the dead are in some place called purgatory. There's for others, they believe that the dead loved ones are not really dead, but living some type of immortal life, some type of spirit in another place. Now, there's some who believe that a person, when they die, they become some just a spirit and they just live as mm -hmm. a spirit. Now, there are others who believe that the dead, they're sleeping. Mm -hmm. or it's like a sleep or death is like a sleep. But, of course, before we go into the Word of God, we must go to our teacher. And our teacher, of course, is the Holy Spirit. We're going we're to ask the Holy Spirit to give us understanding of his holy, holy word. So, Elaine, why don't you open us up with prayer? Yeah. Thank you. Dear most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, as we begin this study on the topic, What Do the Dead Know? We ask that your Holy Spirit give us understanding of this very important topic. And Lord, as we study, may those who have experienced the death of a loved one Lord, we ask that they may find comfort in knowing what the Bible says or the truth as shown in the Bible about death and what happens after a person dies. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 It's beautiful. And you said the right words. This is going to be a comforting lesson because you'll know exactly where a person is after they die. Very comforting. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and get into the Word of God. Let's look at this first question. In order to understand death, friends, we need to understand how life began. That mm -hmm. makes sense, right? So mm -hmm. in order to understand death, you need to understand how life began. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Genesis. Let's go to the famous book, the first book of the Bible. That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. We're going to look, how li look at how life actually began. Okay. okay, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Elaine, read that for us. Okay, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's key, friend. God is the source of all living things. God gave man his life-giving breath. Amen. Amen. So you got that class. So listen very carefully. Now, this breath that sparked life into Adam thousands of years ago. Guess what, friend? It continues from person to person today. So if God did not breathe the breath into Adam, we wouldn't be breathing breath, you know, we wouldn't be breathing right now, the mm -hmm. breath of life. Mm -hmm. Right now we are breathing the breath of life of mm -hmm. God. That's beautiful. Beautiful. So Carrie, according to this text, the biblical formula for our existence is actually uh, the body, which is made from the dust of the ground, that's right, that's right. plus the breath, which is from God. 
That's right. So and that equals a living soul. So it's body. Body. Plus breath. Plus breath. Equals a living soul. Equals a living soul. That's so right. get this, friend. Get mm -hmm. this. So if there's no body. There's no soul. There's no soul. There's no breath. There's no soul. There's no soul. There's no living. So you have to have both. You have Amen. body plus breath mm -hmm. equals a living soul. So it's just, if you subtract from that, you don't have a living soul. That's right. It's very simple, friend. God's breath sparks life. Mm -hmm. And only God can spark life. None of us can spark life. Now, I want you to imagine a light bulb, just for, just for a minute. Imagine the light of a light bulb representing life. Now, if the electricity is cut off from the light bulb, the light will cease to exist, right? Now, Bible class, listen to this. The same is true with human life. When the breath is taken from the body, the living soul cease to exist. That's pretty simple, mm -hmm. but we're going to go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper into the word of God. Okay. Now, does the Bible give us evidence that souls die? Mm -hmm. Remember, we're going from text to text and allowing the Bible to make it very clear and plain. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. Okay. Read that for us. Either. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. And we're just going to look at the first part of that text. Right. right. Let's go ahead and look at that. It says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Again, class, remember that a soul is simply, according to the Bible, a living per person with vitality, with consciousness that is breathing the breath that was given to Adam, the breathing the breath of God, hmm. the living God. Only God can give us breath that sparks life. That's right. So it's not some unconscious being or something, a spirit that actually floats in space, unable to die. The That's soul can die, according exactly. to this text. Exactly. The Bible is very clear. The soul can die. Mm -hmm. You're not floating off somewhere. Now, 1 Timothy 6.15 says that only God is immortal and, and not subject to death. So, in other words, we are all subject to death, mm -hmm. subject to die. So, but we don't God. remain in some unconscious state. Exactly. It's very clear. But let's keep on going deeper, okay? Okay. Let's, let's, keep let's on dig going. a little deeper. Let's dig a little deeper. <laughs> So what happens to a person when he or she dies? Does a person go straight to heaven or hell? But we've seen so far that cannot be the case. But let's see what the Bible says. Does a person go straight to heaven or hell after death? Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. I like this text here. Verse, chapter 12, verse 7. Okay. What's it say? Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. That's very plain. Very plain. Friend, do you get that? It is very, very plain. Ecclesiastes 12, 7 makes it plain. When a person dies, the body, which is made up of dust of the ground, mm -hmm. it decomposes and returns to the dust of the ground, and the spirit goes back to who? God, who God. gave it. Exactly, exactly. Amen. Now, before we move on, we must understand what is meant by, quote unquote, spirit in this text. We need to understand this, okay? Does it mean that a spirit is a bodiless person with consciousness existing somewhere else going to either heaven or hell because some people kind of get this mixed up now to clearly understand what spirit means in ecclesiastes 12 7 we must go back to the old testament hebrew meaning okay now the hebrew word for spirit in ecclesiastes 12 7 is ruach is what ruach which literally means breath okay it literally means breath. So in other words, in Ecclesiastes 12, 7, when the Bible says that the body returns to the dust, or it says that the, that the dust returns to the earth, and right. then it says that the spirit shall return to God. When it says spirit there, it actually means that it's the breath the that actually breath. goes back exactly, to God. Exactly, the literal breath. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Nowhere do we find that the spirit spirit is some type of conscious living bodiless person some body bodiless person floating in heaven this belief is not from the bible we're just coming from the bible so what do the dead know what have you found what do the dead know actually so far so far yes nothing nothing they are literally in the ground basically going to find out like asleep but we find so far from the Word of God, the dead know nothing. But we're going to find some deeper things from the Word of God again. So make sure you stay tuned. We promise to be right back. Welcome back class, welcome back. We are learning about what do the dead know? And so far we see that they know nothing. 
is a person aware of anything after he or she dies? Can he or she, after they die, communicate with the living after death? Again, let's see what the Bible says. I mean, we, see, we have actually built a strong case so far. But let's go to Ecclesiastes again. Okay. We're going to look at chapter 9 this time. We're going to look at chapter 9, verses 5 and 6. Read it along with us, friend. Okay. It says, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for okay. the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Mm -hmm. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Very clear. Let's keep, let's keep on digging deeper, friend. We're going to go look at some more text. Let's look at Psalm 146, verse 4. That's Psalm 146, verse 4. Okay. What's the Bible say? It says, His breath goeth forth, meaning back to God, as mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier. He returneth to his earth, and that's when the dust goes back to the earth again. In that very day, his thoughts perish. His thoughts what? Perish. That's clear. I mean, we can stop. I mean, the Bible is so clear, friend. That's why I love studying the Word of God. And we're going from text to text to, and let the Bible just clear it up. We're not making this up. The Bible's making it very clear. But let's look at some more text. Let's go mm -hmm. to Psalms 115, verse 17. That's Psalms 115, verse 17. What does it say? The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. We don't need to say more. The Bible is so clear, friend. Isn't it clear to you, friend? If you've been following, you see that the Bible is clear. When a person dies, he or she is not aware of anything. They're not conscious of anything. So death is literally like a sleep. Hmm. When you are in a deep sleep, are you conscious of anything? It's sleep without breath. Sleep without breath. The Bible's so simple. Now let's look at the next question. How does Jesus describe death in, 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 uh, in the New Testament? Let's look at that. I've the Bible makes it clear how he describes death. So let's see what, how Jesus describes death. Does he describe it as some type of person living an immortal life, or does he describe it as a sleep? Let's go to John 11, and we're going to look at verses 11 and 14. That's John 11, 11 and 14. Read it with us, friends. Okay, and this is Jesus referring to the death of Lazarus. Okay. And in fact, this whole t chapter of John chapter 11 is actually a very comforting it's, text, it's, and it's very right. It right. clears up the subject of death, and it provides a lot of comfort for mm -hmm. many people. Mm -hmm. uh, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, this is Jesus talking, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Okay. And verse 14 says, Then said Jesus unto them, talking to his disciples plainly, Lazarus is dead. Mm. So Jesus also describes death as a what? As a sleep. As a sleep. I hope you got it, friend, a state of unconsciousness. Now, based on all the text we read so far, when a person dies, he or she is totally unaware or unconscious. Contrary to popular opinion, friend, the Bible is clear and shows us that the dead cannot communicate with the living and the living cannot communicate with the dead. Nowhere, friend, did we read that when a person dies, they go directly to heaven or hell. You didn't, you didn't hear Jesus say, well, Lazarus is in heaven now. You didn't hear him say that. Matter of fact, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the grave, and you can look at this in John 11, verse 43, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Or he said, come forth, Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Now, you didn't hear Jesus say, Lazarus, come down from heaven. I don't think Lazarus would have wanted exactly. to come. <laughs> exactly. It would not have been a joyous occasion, especially exactly. not for Lazarus. Exactly. Uh, it, it's very comforting that Jesus it makes it very clear mm -hmm. that death is like a sleep. Amen. Amen. And uh, also in John chapter 20, verse 17, Jesus makes it very plain that even after his own death, he did not ascend directly into heaven exactly. immediately right after his death. He right. says, I, have, I am not yet ascended to my father. When Mary was about to touch him, he said, touch me not. I have not yet ascended to my father. And that was, of course, after his resurrection. Amen. Amen. Now, when a person dies, they simply know nothing like a person in a deep sleep without breath. Mm -hmm. All right. And the hope is that that's not the rest of the story. That's not the rest of the story. <laughs> Amen. That's why we're kind of excited as we yeah. even as we talk about the subject of death, because we know the rest of the Amen. story. Amen. Amen. Because it's not the end. Because let's look at this next question. Exactly. Now, since we know that a person does not go straight to heaven or hell after death, 
when will the righteous, amen, when will the righteous and the faithful who die in Christ while on this earth go to heaven? When is it going to happen? If you're faithful to God, if you do die in Christ, when is it going to happen? Let's go to this famous, beautiful text that gives us all comfort and hope. That is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, 17, and 18. Let's look at that. Read that, Elaine. Okay, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Oh, this is these are comforting words. Yeah, that's the hope. This is the hope. So when a person dies in Christ, Jesus will come back personally mm -hmm. and raise them up from the dead. Amen. And those who who remain mm -hmm. will be caught up together in the air with Christ. So just imagine it, friend. So if a loved one have died in Christ, and if you are living when Christ comes again, you will see that loved one again. Or if you have died in Christ, you will see Christ again. You will see Christ when he comes. And you'll just be resting peacefully in the grave until he descends from the heavens. And he takes all the loved ones together at the same time. Amen. That's that's very comforting in and of itself. Amen. Amen. Because someone's not up there just kind of worrying about what's going on. Because even though heaven's a beautiful place, I can imagine that if someone, a loved one is there, um, that they'll probably be concerned about their loved one that's down here exactly. and what they're going through. Exactly. So God did the best thing that he could do. He exactly. said, just, just rest. Just rest. Rest. rest Peacefully. Till I come. Exactly. Amen. Amen. So now what else happens? What else happens when a person is resurrected? At this time of resurrection, what happens? Let's okay. go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to look at the last part of 51, and we're going to look at 52 and 53. This is beautiful, friend. What's going to happen? You know, once the people, like once you're dead in Christ and you're risen again, mm -hmm. and you're caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, what's going to happen? What's okay. something special is going to happen? What's something very special is that we shall all be changed. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and Amen. we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. This is when it happens, friends. This is when immortality happens. The mm -hmm. Bible clearly reveals that immortality or eternal life or heaven is not given at our death, but it is given when? When Jesus comes when again. When Jesus comes again. And, it's beautiful. And this is very comforting to know that when someone is faced with the death of a loved one, if someone is grieving uh, a, a lost, uh, very close family member uh -huh. or a friend, there is hope that the Bible lets us know those who are righteous Amen. will live again. Amen. And that's a promise. That's the hope. That's the promise. That is the promise. <laughs> that is our hope. And we can have faith in that hope, friend. Faith. Amen. Faith. Now, it is misleading or deceitful to tell someone if uh, any other way to tell them that, well, your dead person went to straight to heaven or went straight to hell. That is very deceptive. But the Bible makes it very clear, makes it clear about death, abundantly clear. Now, the belief that you actually have some type of existence after death or some type of consciousness after death is literally, friend, let me just tell you straight up, it is a lie. And the author of that lie, of course, is Satan. Now, Satan told this same lie to Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he is still using that same lie today, friend. He is using it today. So let's, let's go back to the scene in Genesis when the devil tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden. So let's go back to that scene there. Mm -hmm. Because again, Satan is the author of this lie. Mm -hmm. Now, what... What was Satan's lie to Eve in which he is still using today to deceive many, especially on the subject of, of death? Okay. Let's look at this in the, let's look at this in Genesis 3, 4. Okay. In Genesis 3, 4. And it says, that. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Okay, but what did God say in Genesis 2, 17, though? God said, Ye shall surely die if you disobey him and eat from the fruit that he said not to eat from, the, the fruit of the tree. So that's a straight up lie. 
That was a straight lie. Satan, Satan says you shall Satan. not die. And God says you, you shall die. It's straight up. But let's 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 continue to look at this. God means what he says, friends. When God says that a person dies, he will cease to exist. They are dead. They are not immortal. They are sure enough dead. Mm -hmm. Now, as we just read in Genesis 3, 4, Satan plainly lied. He told Eve that she would not surely die, which is the direct opposite to God, which said you will die if you eat of the forbidden tree. Because God knows what he says. He is all truth. He is our creator. Amen. And you know, class, Satan is still using that same tired old lie today to deceive billions of people. Yes, billions. He is saying that you still you're not really dead. You're kind of dead. Mm -hmm. You're not surely dead. That's right. And he's and that's actually one of his greatest deceptions, mm -hmm. because some people believe that after a person dies, instead of being surely dead, which is what God says, that they acquire some higher state of existence. That's right. Where they can communicate with their uh, their other loved ones that are still living. That's so dangerous. Yeah. Especially in his last days. It's so dangerous, friend. So why is it important for us not to believe Satan's lies, especially, friends, in these last days? Let's go to this text here. Let's go to Matthew 24, 24. Read this with us because we really, we really need to understand this. What was Jesus saying here? Okay. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and mm -hmm. shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Friends, friends, note this here. In these last days, as described in Revelation 18, 23, Satan and his demons will use sorcery. They will use great signs and wonders to deceive billions Yes, I said billions of people, Satan and his angels, they will impersonate dead loved ones, well-respected leaders, even apostles of Christ, as described in 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, to deceive many in believing other lies that will lead them to eternal death. Remember, that is Satan's plan. That's his main key weapon is to deceive people, especially in the area of death. Now, if people believe in Satan's lies, that people can continue to live or that they can con that they can actually communicate after death, they will be easily deceived in these last days. Friends, you've seen what we've studied today and what the Bible says today. You know the truth today, but we must beware, friend. Do you know that Satan and his evil angels, his evil demons can actually impersonate dead loved ones? even down to the details. Did you know that, friend? Mm, so if a dead loved one, like mm -hmm. a spouse or, or a mother or a father, appears to someone in their bedroom or in their bathroom, in their house, or even anywhere else, we have to recognize, based on what we've studied, what the Bible says, that that is not the loved one because the dead loved one is still resting exactly. in the grave. It's not the loved one, it's something else. It's a demon. Is a demon, friend, and I, and I, because reality is, friend, is Satan is real and his demons are real, and they can impersonate down to the detail. So what we need to do, friend, when when that when that person comes up again, it's not your dead loved one. When a person comes up, ask him to flee. Tell God to have that person flee in the name of Jesus, and this will happen. Mm -hmm. They will flee. They will flee, or that that being yeah. will flee because again, Satan is real. His demons are real and they're not, they're out, they're not playing any games. Right. They want to deceive. deceive. Right. I remember a specific pastor actually told us he had this experience because mm -hmm. he had a very close relationship with his father. Right. And when his father died, he was so hurt by the death of his father. And one night he was sleeping and he saw his father or someone that looked very, very close right. to his father, very down to the detail, sitting on the edge of his bed and, and about to give him some words that he thought were words of wisdom, of, right. yeah, wisdom or something at that time. Mm -hmm. But when he saw that being, he at once recognized, hey, I know what the Bible says exactly. about this. Exactly. I know this is not my father that's sitting here. So immediately he said, in the name of Jesus, flee in the name of Jesus. And as soon as he said Jesus, the being disappeared, mm. totally disappeared. Mm. And mm. it was powerful. And I never will forget that moment. And, I, and so if someone is experiencing that 
even now. Mm -hmm. Because I, I know that there are many people today, I, I, before, years ago, you never heard of, heard of that. As but many. today, for some reason, As it seems like there are a lot of people that are seeing beings um, after their loved one dies. And I assure you, God loves your loved ones. He loves you, and He's there to comfort Amen. you through His Word. He's Amen. given us words of comfort. Amen. So when you see something like this, this happen or occur, remember what the Bible says and say, in the name of Jesus, and rebuke that being, Amen. and the being will flee. Amen, amen, amen. So, friend, will God's faithful people be deceived by Satan's lies? No. You know, the answer is simply no. Acts 17, 11 says what? What's it say? Acts 17 and 11 says, They received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. That's the key. You must do what? Search the scriptures daily. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible is truth. And the Bible is absolute truth. Now, this is another key text here, and that's Isaiah 20, 8, 20. That's mm -hmm. Isaiah 8, 20. What does it say, Lee? It says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. No light. And friend, I, I, let me be honest with you. If we are not studying the word of God, if we're not in it faithfully every day, you will be deceived. It's not if you'll be deceived. We'll be deceived if we're not in the word of God. But if you're in the word of God and sincere in it, and actually follow what God says in his words, you will not be deceived because Satan in these last days, he's going to he's going to perform a lot of wondrous miracles, a lot of wondrous miracles. And it may appear to be true. But again, you must test everything with the word of God to see if it's real or not. Now, if it is not in line with the word of God, you must throw it out. You cannot guess about truth, friend. You must go to the word of God for truth for yourself and study it for yourself. So my appeal to you is this. It's very simple, friend. Very simple today. Study the word of God daily for yourself. Do not take any belief or doctrine for granted. Get in the habit of saying, what does the Bible say about yeah. this or about that? Search diligently for truth. Sincerely pray to God for understanding. And I guarantee you, friend, he will give you understanding. And when he gives you that understanding, accept the truth. Amen. And walk in the truth. Amen. Because he will lead you to all truth. Mm -hmm. That is a promise, friend. That is a promise. Well, friend, we got to go. I hope you've learned something today. I hope this study has been comforting to you. But if you have any questions, email us and we'll answer any questions that you have. But friend, we got to go. I pray that you will come with us next time, that you will join us next time. But until that time, make sure you tune in on the same station at the same great time. May God bless you, you all. all. Please write to us at Pathway to Peace, Post Office Box 122, Wadesboro, North Carolina, 28170, or email us at info at pathwaytopeace.net. Also, visit our website at pathwaytopeace.net.